While Kale and Rebrianne were fighting, she asked what her wish would be, which Kale said she'd probably give the wish to her wife or mother. Rebrianne then turns into her Super Rebrianne form, which forces Kale to go Super Saiyan Blue. Then when she kicks Rebrianne away, she lands in Jiren's feet. Rebrianne then backs off, but Jiren ignores her as he sets his sights on Kale. Belmont then talked to Jiren telepathically and told him to crush Kale. As Kale confronted Jiren, he set off a shockwave that shook the entire tournament. Kale started the fight with a resist blast, but the force of Jiren's energy made a wall and blocked it. Even though she didn't expect it to do much, she tried using her wrathful form, but her attacks did nothing. So, she went Super Saiyan, but her punches didn't affect Jiren. Even as a Super Saiyan 2, Jiren was unfazed by her attacks. Since she mastered Super Saiyan 3 in this timeline, she tried going into that form, but it still did nothing. She then tried her Master Legendary Super Saiyan form, but Jiren dodged her effortlessly. Even when taking that up to Super Saiyan 2, she couldn't land a hit. When she took that up to Super Saiyan 3, she still couldn't land a good hit on him. Then when she went Super Saiyan God, he began blocking her punches with a finger. Every fighter stopped to watch the fight between Jiren and Kale, as she then went Super Saiyan Blue. She knocked Jiren away and exchanged blows with him, but he then gained the upper hand. Since she was being knocked around, she resorted to using her legendary Super Saiyan Blue form. He then knocks her away and says it's over, but she manages to save herself. She charged back at Jiren, but he swiped her away, so she decided to try using the Spirit Bomb. Kale never used it in this timeline, but she learned it a while ago. After Goku used it against Boo, she seen how useful the technique could be, so she went to King Kai's planet to learn it. As she drops her base form, she then asks for energy, so all of the universe 7 begins giving her some, minus Vegeta as he thought it was a ridiculous attack. Kale realized this would take a while, but Jiren said he'd wait and that she should come at him with all she has. Rebrianna tried to attack the distracted Kale, but Vegeta blasted her aside. When she finished charging it, she said it was Universe 7 Spirit Bomb, and she then launched it at Jiren. He was pushing it back with one hand, so she went Super Saiyan Blue again. He then used both hands to push it back, so she used her legendary Super Saiyan Blue form. This created a deadlock, but since her power continuously grows in this form, she eventually started pushing it back once again. Though he let out more power to send it right back, so it began to collide with her. She let out a scream, and she tried as hard as she could to resist the Spirit Bomb. She barely managed to stop it and push it back, but Jiren put his arms down and sent it back with a glance. She let out her remaining power and halted its movement, but the force from both sides caused the Spirit Bomb to expand and contract. It then became like a black hole and pulled Kale into it, as it then explodes and shakes the entire Null Realm. Kale was seemingly vaporized, but the Grand Minister says that since it was by her own attack, Jiren won't be disqualified. However, a shockwave then shakes the entire arena, and a large pillar of light appears. Kale then emerges from it, as she is in the Ultra Instinct sign form. After a single footstep, she attacks Jiren with a kick, but he dodges it. She continues trying to attack him, but he still dodges her attacks. So Dispo and Toph try attacking her. They are easily thrown aside, so Jiren signals for them to stop. The two begin to fight again, with Kale dodging his attacks, though hers are blocked too. Whisin gleefully points out that Kale is unlocked Ultra Instinct, which shocks all the gods. Kale eventually lands two clean hits, but when she uses all her power for a third punch, she drops her base form. Jiren then blasts her away, though he is then attacked by Hit. He thought Jiren would be at his weakest in that moment, but it failed to affect Jiren. Vegeta then confronted Kale and asked what that was, but she wasn't sure herself, as Rebrianne then appears. While Vegeta sets his sights on her, Kale disappeared, since 18 came and took her out of the way. Since 18 was also on Yardra and learned their healing technique, she would use it to heal Kale, as she then goes on her way. Hit was still fighting Jiren, but he was overpowered even when he used a time skip. Kale was watching the fight, but Salonel and Pilona came up behind her and attacked her. Though, they were then intercepted by Gohan and Piccolo, which Salonel and Pilona were shocked to see their opponent was another in the Namekian. Vegeta was still fighting Rebrian, and was pushing her back, The Rosie came in and kicked him aside. He fired energy blasts at them, but they escaped and hid before the smoke cleared. Back with Hit and Jiren, he managed to memorize the timing of Jiren's attacks, so he uses a time release to send Jiren to the edge of the arena. He stops himself from being eliminated, but Hit then uses the time prison to trap him, as he then tells the Universe 6 Saiyans to eliminate other fighters so they can win. Jiren manages to break out of this technique, so Hit tried using all his power for one final attack, but Jiren eliminated him with the power impact. The Grand Minister then tells all the fighters that half of the tournament has passed. So, Jiren tells the rest of Team Universe 11 that it is up to them, and he returns to meditating. Biara and Kato Pesra then approach Team Universe 11, but they were easily repelled. Koitsuke, Ponchia, and Balareva then assaulted Kale, but she stood a better chance as her stamina was restored. Meanwhile, Piccolo and Gohan continue their fight with Salonel and Pilona as they exchange blows with each other. Khalifla was attacked by Mana, but Kaba stepped in so Khalifla could rest. This angered her at first, but Khalifla eventually left like Kaba told her to. Kaba then turned into a Super Saiyan and began to fight her, but she then expanded her body. She then starts beating him down, so he refers to his base form, to the point that he is 
Force City into the arena. He tried to bait her into rolling off the arena, but she quickly reacted and knocked him off the ring. While Cabo was fighting Mama, Renzo would be ambushed by Kato Pesro, though he would be able to beat down Kato Pesro when he was just in his base form. So, Kato Pesro went into his whirlwind speed mode, which allowed him to land multiple hits on Renzo. Since they didn't have much power behind them, Renzo was able to withstand these attacks. He then went into his Raging Battle mode, which reduced his speed, but raised his power. Now that he had the strength to, he would have been able to damage Renzo greatly if he could land a hit on him. Even with his leg injury, Renzo was still able to dodge Kato Pesro's attacks, it just took some effort for him to do so. Kato Pesro then resorts to transforming into his ultimate mode, which gives him both the strength and speed of his previous two forms combined. This allows him to beat down Renzo as he forces him to the edge of the arena. He then tried attacking Kato Pesro in a last ditch effort, but he's kicked out of the arena. Before he and Kata fell out of the arena completely, Vegeta catches them both, then throws them into the ring. They tried thanking Vegeta for saving them, but he quickly kneed Kaba in the stomach and punched Renzo in his. He said he wasn't saving them, he just couldn't stand to see weak Saiyans. Vegeta then asked Kaba if he planned to lose without fulfilling his promise, which after Kaba says one of their universes will be erased, Vegeta promises to wish for Universe 6 to be revived. Kaba and Renzo made the same promise in case their universe won, so Vegeta tells him to fight without regret as a Saiyan. Once they leave, Kaba gets into a fight with Mana again, as she vows to defeat Vegeta, Renzo, and Khalifa after defeating him. While pushing into the edge with her assault, she insults him and calls Vegeta a coward, which enrages him. This causes Kaba to become a Super Saiyan too, and when she tries to attack him, he easily blasts her out of the ring. At the same time of Kaba's fight with Mama, Renzo gets into a fight with Kato Pesro again, but he's quickly pushed to the edge of the arena once more. Since Kato Pesro is a self-proclaimed policeman of justice, he says after beating Renzo, he'll go on to beat the other Saiyans, and then arrest all of them. Thinking this would make Renzo angry, especially since it would include his sister being arrested. This, in combination with how Kaba told him Super Saiyan is achieved, allowed him to tap into the form for the first time, once in this form. He wouldn't waste any time in fighting Kato Pesra, so he blasts him out of the ring as well. Afterwards, Vegeta was going to fight Jiren, but Toph intervenes, which pushes Vegeta into going to his Super Saiyan Blue form. Since Frieza isn't there in this timeline, Kaba isn't ambushed by him and eliminated, so he goes to meet up with Khalifa. Renzo, however, is quickly attacked by the same invisible fighter Roshi was. Since Gami Solis was trying to avenge Mana by knocking a Universe 6 fighter out, he went after Renzo. Since Willow had overheard about Renzo's injured leg, he figured Renzo would be an easy target. He would start beating down Renzo, so he would go into his Super Saiyan form again. Once in it, he still can't land a hit on Gami Solo since he can't see him. Gami Solo would target Renzo's injured leg and knock him out of the arena. Vegeta continued fighting Toph, but he was pushed back, so he was standing with Kale. Kale was still being attacked by Koitsuke, Pontia, and Balaretta, though Khalifa comes in and knocks him down, saving her. She then goes Super Saiyan 2 and challenges Kale to a fight. When they begin fighting, Khalifa can't land a hit at first, but once she does, Kale uses the cloning technique she learned on Yardrat. This confuses Khalifa at first, but Kale then uses the instant transmission to speed blitz her, though she slowly adapts to Kale's movements, which pushes Kale into going Super Saiyan 2. Khalifa uses her crush cannon, but Kale barely blocks it as she then has an equal fight with Khalifa. Cabo was watching the fight, which Kale noticed him, so she asked him to join the fight. He quickly went Super Saiyan 2, as he and Khalifa win clean hits on Kale. She was being pushed back, and when they fired energy blast at her, she went Super Saiyan 3 to block these blasts. Since Kale was healed by 18, and she mastered Super Saiyan 3 in this timeline, she has the stamina to maintain this form. Khalifa then tried to become the Super Saiyan 3, but she slipped into her legendary Super Saiyan form, which excited Kale. This makes Jiren flinch during his meditation and causes Toph and Vegeta to get distracted during their fight. Kaba then tries to talk to Khalifa to get through to her, which works, as she gains full control of her power and goes into her Master Legendary Super Saiyan 2 form. Kale was being pushed back by them, but since she had a stamina to do so, she tried teaching them how to go Super Saiyan 3 like she promised to. Since Khalifa and Kaba have high potential, they likely would be able to tap into this form. After they achieved this form, they would be beating Kale, as she was being pushed back once again. When she reached the edge of the arena, she turned into her Super Saiyan God form. Once in it, despite their combination attacks, she was able to hold her own. They are eventually pushed back, so Khalifa tells Kaba to take out that thing, while Kale charges a resist blast and fires it. The ground beneath him is shattered, but they didn't use the Batara to fuse into Kaliba. As she hops back into the ring, this surprised Kale, as she never seen the Batara earrings used in this timeline. Regardless, she's easily overpowered by Kaliba after they start to fight. Meanwhile, Vegeta was getting pushed back by Toph, since he was too distracted with watching Kale's battle. Then with Gohan and Piccolo, they were still fighting evenly with Salonel and Pielina. Regardless, Kale continues her struggle with Kaliba, as she barely defends herself against the blast. When the smoke clears, she goes into her Super Saiyan Blue form. Kaliba then goes Super Saiyan, which shakes the entire arena. She then attacked Kale, which forced her to go into her legendary Super Saiyan Blue form. She eventually lands a clean hit on Kaliba and counters a blast of hers with a resist blast. However, she appears behind her and kicks her hard enough that she goes into her base form. 
she was going to eliminate her as Kale struggled to stand. When Kaliba unleashed her energy barrage, Kale deflected them all. As she went into the Ultra Instinct sign form again, Kaliba then went Super Saiyan 2 and charged Kale, but she easily dodged all her attacks. Kale then unleashes her own barrage of punches on her, which knocks her away. Meanwhile, this power awakens Jiren from his meditation as he regroups with Toph and Dispo, back with Kale. She kicks Kaliba away as she starts to charge her blaster stream. Kaliba then decided to power up and use everything she had as she turns into her Super Saiyan 3 form. She then used her Galaxy stream, but Kale skated on top of it with her blaster stream. When she fired it at Kaliba, this sent her flying out of the arena. She defused while falling out of the ring, so both Khalifa and Kaba were eliminated. Top, Dispo, and Jiren then discuss how Kale was getting stronger as time passed. Kale then collapsed from this form stamina drain as she reverts to her base form. Vegeta then vowed to master Ultra Instinct before Kale could. Gohan and Piccolo were going to help Kale, but they were interrupted by Salonel and Pilona. A team wanted to help her as well, but she had to use the Yardradian healing technique to heal her own leg first it was damaged in an explosion earlier. She and Seventeen then went to go help Kale, as she was being attacked by Rebri and Rosie. Once they arrived, Seventeen and Eighteen deflected their love symphony. Seventeen and Eighteen began to take on Rosie and Rebri, while Kale was surrounded by Rabana, Zarbuto, and Zerloin. Rebri and the other Eighteen to stop running, but after she said that she came to win, as she has a wife, Rebri was shocked to learn that Kale is her wife. Regardless, Rebrian aimed an attack at both 17 and 18, but they managed to take out Rosie instead. Rebrian then imprisoned 18 and absorbed the love from her teammates as she turned into her lovely love, love form. Rebrian was about to use her fist of love, but thoughts of Kale inspired 18 to break free. After 17 defeated Biara, he came to help 18 against Rebrian. As she went into her ultimate form, she went after Rebrian and punched a hole through her. Brienne de Chateau then fell out of the arena, as she cried since she was defeated. Shin then said that the power of love prevailed, namely Kale and 18's love, so 18 tried to finger beam at him and threatened him. Zerloin, Zarbuto, and Rabana began to fight Kale all at once, so she was tired from her last battle. Khalifa then shouted to Salonel and Pilna, which raised their fighting spears as they fought Gohan and Piccolo. As their fight continued, the two Universe 6 Namekians started to grow faster and stronger. Meanwhile, Zerloin, Zarbuto, and Rabana were then transformed in the same way that Rebrian, Kakunza, and Rosie did. 17 and 18 then joined up with Kale, as they fight the Universe 2 fighters together. Gohan and Piccolo then realize that the Universe 6 Namekians assimilated with all the other Namekians. So, Gohan then transformed into his ultimate form to take them on. Piccolo then used his special beam cannon, but it didn't work, so Gohan shielded him from peeling his mouth blast. This motivated Piccolo to fight to the fullest, so he went into his ultimate form as well. Zerloin, Zarbuto, and Rabano then combined their powers to form the pretty black hole. It was bearing down on 17, 18, and Kale, but so that Kale could rest more, 18 stepped up to take them on. She went into her ultimate form and began to use her energy cannon. Even with this, she was pushed onto the back foot as she was struggling to take down the pretty black hole. This is when the power awakens inside of her as a red, orange, and yellow aura ignites around her. Her hair becomes longer and flowing as both her eyes and hair become a gradient of the same color as her aura is. The arena also heats up around her as she was releasing an immense heat. Unfortunately, I wasn't that happy with my art for this form, so if someone has ideas to improve it, please let me know. The idea was to take inspiration for her form from the sun slash stars, hence the yellow, orange, and red colors, so stars can be that color. I only had the idea to relate her form to the sun slash stars since she is an android that has infinite energy, and the sun gets off energy almost constantly. I decided to name this form Radiating Vivacity, since radiate can mean to emit energy, especially light or heat, in the form of rays or waves, and vivacity is the quality of being attractively lively and animated, which, in my mind, I related the radiate part to the sun, and the vivacity part to her being an infinite and energy android. Gohan then countered Pilona's mouth blast with a Kamehameha, as Piccolo fires a special beam cannon through both Salono and Pilona. This weakens him enough that Gohan's Kamehameha manages to eliminate them both. 18 then powers their energy cannon up into the solar cannon, as it breaks through the pretty black hole and eliminates Zerloin, Zarbuto, and Rabonra. 18 then drops back to her base form because of the strain of this new form of hers. Brienne de Chateau and Universe 2 then gave a final message of love, as they were then erased. Even Hellas and Power are erased as well, leaving only the Angel Sour behind, as you look solemn. Universe 6 was also erased, along with Champa and Fuwa, which left only the angel Vados alive, so she went and sat with Whis. Before Champa was erased, he stuck his tongue out at Beerus, as he then disappeared. Beerus then said, say something, as he wished his brother would have said something to him instead. Meanwhile, both Gohan and Vegeta are nearly knocked out of the arena by something, but they are rescued by Piccolo. They think this is the invisible fighter from earlier, as 18 is an attack by the mysterious opponent, but she can't attack or defend against him. Piccolo then tries using the hyper-explosive demon wave, but it doesn't work. Gohan then gets the idea to use Key Blast to throw up dust, which reveals the lizard-shaped outline of Gami 
Solus. Now that Piccolo can see him, he wastes no time of blasting Gummy Solus out of the arena. A strange red zone is then made around Universe 7, as defeated warriors from the erased universes appear inside of it. These illusions can attack them, but they can't be hit or sensed, though Piccolo senses the key of a nearby person. He quickly finds Yonka hiding, as he then easily blows him out of the ring. This was Universe 4's last fighter, so Xeno was going to erase them, but Quartello refused to accept this. He tried to take everyone down with him, but Xeno erased him and Kuru, along with the rest of Universe 4. This left only the Angel Cognac behind, but he remained silent when his universe was erased. Paparoni then assembled the other Universe 3 fighters to go after Universe 7. 17 and 18 were struggling against Biara, and Camel and Vegeta were attacked by Pontia, Balretta, and Koitsuke. Though, Gohan stepped in so that they could conserve their stamina, as he was managing to hold his ground against them. 17 and 18 then used their infinite stamina to wear down Biara's defenses, so 18 then knocked him out of the arena. Paparoni then ordered Koitsuke, Pontia, and Balretta to merge into Koitsuaretta. Gohan was struggling to take him on, so Camel and Vegeta went Super Saiyan Blue and rushed in. This was just to buy time for Gohan to charge his coming on Ha, which seemingly eliminated Koisioretta. However, he suddenly appears behind Gohan, as Paparoni vowed to unleash Universe 3's final tactic. Paparoni then merged with Koisioretta to become Anilaza. This giant quickly began beating down all the Universe 7 fighters. Super Saiyan Vegeta tried using his Big Bang attack, but it was swatted aside. Can let Super Saiyan God and attack alongside the others, but they were easily knocked back. So that the others could rest, Piccolo stepped up to try and take on Anilaza. While in his ultimate form, he was getting some hits in, but he was quickly beaten down. He was knocked off the edge, but while he was falling, something awakened inside Piccolo. A sigil of lights on his back, his skin turned orange, his antenna stood up, he grew bulkier. He had managed to tap into his potential, which caused him to go into his orange form. He then stretched his arm to pull him back into the ring. Power-wise, he would be beating Amiwaza down at first. However, with Amiwaza's size, he was getting good hits in on Piccolo as well. He resorted to using his gigantification technique, so that he was equal in size to Amiwaza. This allowed him to easily beat the giant down, which a giant then grew wings and flew up, and started to use a giant energy ball. Piccolo then used a special beam cannon, which broke through the energy ball and hit Amiwaza, eliminating him, as he then defused into Koitsuke, Pontia, Balloretta, and Paparoni. Xeno then erased Universe 3, including Moscow and Iyer. Before Moscow was erased, Mule came out of the hack in Moscow's stomach and thanked Kampari for all his support. Kampari was the only one left in Universe 3, though he was surprised Mule came out of the robot suit at the end. Kale then went into her blue form and began fighting with Jiren. However, Vegeta then barged in and went into his blue form as he started to fight Vegeta instead. Elsewhere, Piccolo and 18 were fighting Dispo, but he was using his speed to dodge their attacks. Meanwhile, Gohan and 17 began fighting Top, while Gohan warns that they need to steer clear of Top's big arms. As Kale and Vegeta took turns fighting Jiren, Vegeta observed his attack pattern, so he then landed a clean hit on Jiren, but he was sent flying shortly afterwards. Dispo tried to trip Piccolo up by using his speed to make after images, but he didn't fall for this trick. 17 and Gohan were struggling against Top, as his Kamehameha proved ineffective. Vegeta managed to stay in the ring after he was hit with Jiren's power impact, so he began to charge his final flash. Vegeta taunts him to take it head on, so he does, which caused him to be flat on the ground after the smoke cleared. However, he quickly teleported in front of Vegeta and blasted him with a counter impact, which caused Vegeta to go down. After Jiren tells the warrior to rest, Kale powers up her blue form to take on Jiren once more. Dispo is beating down Piccolo, though he eventually recovers and starts firing key blasts at Dispo. With 17 and Gohan, 17 gets purposely grabbed by Toph and forms a barrier around him, as Gohan uses his ultimate explosive Kamehameha. This pushes him towards the edge, but Toph punches 17 so hard he drops his barrier, so Gohan stops his attack. Back with Kale, she tried planting key landmines beneath Jiren, but he dodged and began to beat her down. Kale almost knocked him out of the ring by using some destructive discs, but he jumps back into the arena. Jiren quickly begins to beat her down, as he forces her to drop back to her base form. Does Kale and Vegeta then step up to go against Jiren, as she goes into her legendary blue form and Vegeta uses his blue form. Vegeta then remembered his promise to Renzo and Kaba, so he resolved to overcome his limits in his own way. As he powered up, a change came over him, as he unlocked the Super Saiyan Blue Evolved form for the first time. The two then began to fight Jiren together, which they started to push him back, as their lack of coordination was confusing Jiren. They then attacked Jiren with a resist blast and final flash, but he took these attacks head on. Meanwhile, Dispo started to pick up the pace against Piccolo in 18, as they were managing to predict his movements at first. As he started pummeling them, they resorted to turning into their ultimate forms. Dispo couldn't face him in these forms, so he had to go into the super maximum light speed mode. So, he started to beat them down, as he knocked them closer to the edge. However, Gohan managed to break away from his fight with Toph, so he came in and kicked Dispo away. Since Gohan was now there to help out Piccolo, 18 went to help 17 fight against Top. Since Piccolo was low on stamina from using his orange form earlier, he wasn't able to tap into his ultimate form for long. 
So, during his and Gohan's fight against Dispo, he and Gohan would be winning against Dispo at first. As his stamina started to falter, Piccolo dropped the back into his base form. Dispo used his opportunity to knock Piccolo out and kicked him away, so he was taking on Gohan alone. Gohan was still getting pummeled, but with Piccolo defeated, this angered Gohan enough to cause something to awaken within him. His hair gets longer and turns white, while his eyes become red in color, as he has unlocked the Gohan Beast form for the first time. When Dispo attacks him in this form, Gohan is unfazed, as he starts to pummel Dispo in return. Since he was overpowering Dispo, he forced him to the edge. Gohan then unleashes Kaneha on Dispo, eliminating him. Shortly afterwards, Gohan then reverts to his base form as he passed out from the strain of his new form. Kano and Vegeta continued attacking Jiren together, but their attacks still did nothing. Meanwhile, 17 and 18 continued their fight against Top, as 17 uses Barrier to block Top's attacks. After attempting to stall Top with an endless barrage of key blasts, he moves out of the way as the two then get into a beam struggle. Top was pushing 17 towards the edge, so 18 went to her ultimate form and began to shoot him in the back with her infinity bullet. She then used her infinity missile, which damaged Top enough to cause him to be enveloped by 17's blast. 18 then went to eliminate Top, but he rose up and denounced the need for justice, as he then turned into his god of destruction mode. 17 and 18 then tried to blast him, but their attacks were nullified by his aura. He then uses the energy of destruction against 18, which starts to overwhelm her and causes an explosion that cracks the arena into pieces. He then fires the energy of destruction at 17, but he manages to dodge it. Before he can blast 17 again, his blast is nullified by a rock that 18 threw. She was now in her base form, but she tried using her infinity cannon against Top, though it is obliterated. He then rushes in and thrashes 18, before sending her flying out of bounds. 17 stops her from being eliminated by throwing a rock at her. 17 and Top have sent blasts at each other, but 17's were nullified. He tried hiding from Top, but he was found, that before he could be eliminated, 18 blew up Top's key ball. While the three were fighting, Jiren, Kale, and Vegeta's fight drew near. 17 and 18 were then blown away by Jiren's power impact, as he and Top had wordlessly come to an understanding. Top began to pursue Vegeta, as he didn't use his final flash against Top, but it was nullified too. After Vegeta then reflects on the things he can't toss aside, like how Top tossed aside a sense of justice, he begins pummeling Top. Vegeta was dodging all of Top's attacks, as he began to charge the final explosion. Top tried to counter it with his Sphere of Destruction, but this didn't work, as Vegeta's attack was too much to destroy. Top was overwhelmed in the explosion, as he is eliminated. They thought Vegeta truly sacrificed himself, though he was alive, but he dropped to his base form. Jiren then congratulated Vegeta on defeating Top, as Vegeta impressed him, but he began to power up to unleash his hidden power. Jiren then powered up into his full power form, as he then took on Kale, Vegeta, and 17 at once. Though all their attacks were ineffective against Jiren, he was caught off guard and injured by 17. After hearing Jiren's backstory, he told 17 to lament his own weakness, as he used his power impact against them. 17 then used his barrier to hold him back, while he also protected the immobilized Universe 7 fighters. 17 then creates an explosion that rocks the arena and stops Jiren's blast, but his barriers manage to protect the others. Since 17 self-destructed, Jiren didn't receive a penalty for this, so the grief-stricken 18 stepped up to take on Jiren. In her anger, she tapped into her radiating vivacity form again, as she quickly charged at Jiren. After pummeling him and sending him flying backwards, she tried to barrage him with her infinity bullet. He was pushed back to the edge of the arena, so she tried using her solar cannon again to eliminate him. However, once the smoke cleared, Jiren was still standing there, but his outfit did start to become tattered. Regardless, he wasted no time in rushing her with a barrage of punches and kicks. As he started to use more of his power, she didn't stand a chance, she was forced back to her base form. He then knocked her off into the distance, where she then passed out. So that Vegeta and Kale could conserve more stamina, Gohan and Piccolo stepped up to try their luck against Jiren. They both went into their ultimate forms, as they then started to attack Jiren together. Unlike Kale and Vegeta, their attacks were coordinated, so Jiren was able to read them easily. They started to read his attacks as well, so he quickly knocked Gohan away so that he could focus on them one at a time. As he started to pummel Piccolo, this would result in him tapping into his orange form once more. He started to knock Jiren around as he then surrounded him with his Hell's Own Grenade. Once he unleashed it, this caused Jiren to get slightly more damaged as his outfit became even more tattered. Before Piccolo could try to continue his assault, Jiren appeared in front of him and used the overheat magnetron to eliminate Piccolo. In the stands, Beerus praised Piccolo for managing to take out strong fighters and damage Jiren slightly. Gohan and Shakely rose to his feet, as he started to get mad at himself for not being able to help Piccolo. This anger caused him to go into his Gohan Beast form once again, as he glared daggers at Jiren. His anger would have pushed his power even higher, so he would have put Jiren on the back foot at first, though, as he charged up a special beam cannon, Jiren stood there to take it head on. After it hit him and the smoke cleared away, he was relatively unscathed, except for a round tear on his uniform where the special beam cannon hit. With a swift punch to Gohan's gut, he knocked him down into his base form. Gohan didn't give up, though, as he still tried to fight Jiren. However, Jiren used his Heat Wave Magnetron to send Gohan flying out of the arena. In the stands, Beerus praises Gohan as he calls him by his name for once. 
Vegeta then tried taking on Jiren in his base form, but he was clearly outmatched. He was knocked over the edge, though he held on with one hand. He remembered his family and his promise to Kata and Renzo, he pulled himself back in. He then continued to be knocked around by Jiren, but he managed to not be eliminated since his boot got caught on a piece of rubble. He returned to the ring once more after hearing Bulma's voice urging him on. He fired off a final flash, and even though the stint damaged Jiren, he was impressed by Vegeta's pride. Jiren is sent flying again, so he cursed himself for failing to keep his promise and he shed tears as he apologized to Bulma, Kaba, and Renzo. He then donated his remaining energy to Kale as he then appeared in the stands. Beerus then congratulated him for doing so well in the tournament. Kale then confronted Jiren as she turned into a Super Saiyan Blue, but she was still being overwhelmed. Jiren then uses Overheat Magnetron, and as she was about to be eliminated, she reflected on how everyone put their faith in her. She then dodged Jiren's key blast, but she regained her Ultra Instinct Sign form again. She was managing to continuously dodge attacks of his, while also landing hard hits of her own. She tried using the same strategy she did against Kalibla, of using her Divine Blaster Stream up close, but Jiren blocked it with his power impact. She then hits the arena floor, but after Vegeta reminds her that he entrusted her with his promise, she starts to fight Jiren again. Jiren then uses Affinity Rush, which she was blocking his punches, but it also caused the ground beneath her to crumble. She soon knocks him back, she is surrounded in a bright white hot key. After crushing his key attack, she dodges his punches and lands a few attacks of her own. The glow surrounding her body then dissipated as she has now unlocked a perfected Ultra Instinct form. As their fight continues, she is completely outclassing him, which, him being overwhelmed caused him to go into a super cool power form. This allowed him to get the upper hand at first, though she seemingly gets stronger as the fight goes on, so she was fighting for the sake of others. After she defeated Jiren, he tried to attack the stands with a key blast, but she deflected it. She then attacked him again, and after exchanging blows, she finishes him off with a supreme blaster stream. She was going to eliminate him, but she didn't collapse because of the strain of this form. He sent her flying, but she was in saved by 17 and 18, who was in a radiating capacity form. As he confronted Jiren, he reverted to her base form and landed on a piece of rubble. As 17 and 18 fought Jiren, they noticed he had grown weaker, which terrified them, so he then dropped to his knees. Before he could be eliminated, Todd made a speech about believing in him, which motivated him to stand up. He then counterattacks 18, which she has to combine her power with 17 to hold him back. So she drops back to her base form, but Kelvin struggled to get back on her feet as she joined in the fight again. Together, she and 18 rushed Jiren and broke through his wall of energy, while 17 supported them from behind with a volley of energy blasts. Jiren eventually breaks through her soul and tries to go attack 17. 18 had Kale throw her at Jiren, and after she did, 18 tried to tackle him out of the arena. Kale joined her in pushing him out of the ring, as she was flickering in and out of her Super Saiyan form. Jiren, 18, and Kale were all eliminated at the same time, but she was Universe 11's last fighter. As Zeno prepared to erase Universe 11, Jiren received thanks from his teammates for his efforts, even though he treated them coldly. Even Belmont and Margarita praised him, and the rest of Universe 11, for their efforts. Regardless, Kale came over and thanked Jiren for the fight, and mentioned that she'd like to fight him again. This baffles Jiren, but he smiles as he and the rest of Universe 11 is erased. This includes Belmont and Kai, as they were erased as well, which left only the Angel Margarita behind. So 17 was the last person in the arena. The Grand Minister summoned Super Shenron so 17 could make his wish, which he wished for all of the erased universes to be brought back, so the Grand Minister passed his wish on to Super Shenron. After the universes were revived, Kale and the others were told that a selfish wish would have caused the erasure of everything. Everyone then returned to Castle Corporation together so that they could watch the sunrise. They then celebrated their victory in the tournament, along with celebrating the birth of Bulma. Eventually, Kale and Vegeta decided to go spar as they took off to the nearby yard. Once there, they both went Super Saiyan Blue as they began to fight each other. They vowed they continued to improve and get stronger as life goes on in Universe 7.